Good afternoon, dear colleagues, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, it's really an honor to have the opportunity to share with you the experience that we are conducting at the Instituto Neurologico Carlo Best of Milan regarding the use of uh, ultrasound fusion imaging uh, uh, in neurosurgery. And uh, a particular thank to Dr. Uh, Solbiati, who introduced us to this very interesting uh, um, tool and uh, followed uh, our development uh, since uh, 2009. I have no disclosure, and this project is uh, partially funded by the European community. Um, as uh, was pointed out uh, uh, before and by the Dr. Selbeck, <coughs> image guidance is a pivotal tool in neurosurgery. Uh, Neuronavigation uh, has been in use since the late 90s. Uh, it is um, it's kind of a gold standard, it's widespread, it's a dynamic uh, modality that are uh, highly informative, but it's based on preparative imaging. Um, it offers, a, it has a good spatial resolution. Uh, it uh, offers a modality, imaging modalities, which is uh, familiar to neurosurgeon, but it's not real time uh, because the images are not uh, updated during surgery. Uh, this is, uh, to have uh, updated images is uh, possible uh, to obtain with the u using ultrasound. But uh, most of the neurosurgeons are not accustomed to this uh, technique, which has been in use since, since the 60s anyway. <coughs> uh, they uh, have the, a dramatic improvement in the last years, uh, but they have some drawbacks, and specifically the narrow field of view and uh, the, uh, they are operator dependent, so uh, the surgeon should master the technique. And uh, as you all know, these drawbacks are the sectorial view compared to the uh, panoramic view offered by the MRI. Sorry. Um, the Another issue with the ultrasound is that the uh, neurosurgeons are usually accustomed to orthogonal uh, visualization, while uh, when we tilt the probe, we have uh, non-orthogonal uh, um, um, tomographic planes. And also the semiotics uh, is uh, really uh, changes according to different uh, surgical uh, uh, windows, and uh, it's not uh, uh, strictly codified. Um, therefore, even if we have a nice picture with a very high, very good resolution in which we have also anatomical landmarks such as the mesencephalon here or the pineal gland at the temporal edge in a temporal window, uh, especially for uh, beginners, it's much better to have the ultrasound image coupled uh, with uh, the MRI in order to compare uh, the two images and uh, uh, obtain uh, anatomical information on the ultrasound and also to maintain the orientation. And uh, <coughs> having this uh, in mind, all the uh, structures visible on the ultrasound, uh, be be they become more clear uh, to understand their, um, the, the anatomy. As I said, we uh, motivated this uh, technology from uh, uh, Dr. Solbiati, who showed us this technique uh, in uh, 2009, and this allowed us to uh, put together the um, positive aspects of both neural navigation and intraoperative ultrasound. So we can have a good spatial resolution, a panoramic view, and uh, an updated uh, image uh, data set. Uh, we use a uh, last generation uh, ultrasound uh, uh, a um, machine equipped with an um, electromagnetic system for navigation, uh, and uh, which is coupled to an uh, antenna which is mounted both on the pointer and also on the ultrasound probe. So we can use the probe uh, to navigate within the 3D frame. Uh, this is our uh, operative setup. Uh, we load the DICOM data uh, in the machine, then uh, we position the patient, and uh, one of the favor that we have is that the patient is usually kept, uh, the, the head is kept still uh, in, a, uh, in a holder, and then we registrate 
the data, the, the, the image data in the 3D frame using uh, external anatomical landmarks. Because uh, at the beginning, of course, we cannot use the second modality, which is the ultrasound. Then we use uh, the pointer for the regist registration pointer for uh, to verify the accuracy of the navigation system and also uh, to plan the craniotomy and uh, uh, the, surgical, uh, this, the surgical access. After uh, sterile uh, conditions are set, uh, the probe is usually wrapped in a uh, sterile plastic sheet with a gel for acoustic coupling. And also we drape the keyboard of the, of the ultrasound machine uh, because in our opinion it's uh, mandatory that the surgeon uh, has to operate uh, the machine because being an operator dependent uh, technique, uh, the surgeon should uh, set all the parameters to, in order to achieve the proper visualization. Then after the craniotomy, we made a first scan uh, with a, without opening the dura. Then we scan uh, usually the lesion. Our main uh, target uh, is uh, neuro-oncology, so we, we, mainly, uh, we mainly use it for uh, brain tumor surgery. Um, and as you can see, after uh, bone removal, we can scan the, 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 the lesion with the two modalities, the ultrasound and the MRI displayed in a coplanar fashion. And we mainly use the 2D uh, B mode. Uh, the coplanarity is uh, uh, warranted by the f first by the registration, and also the two images are scaled thanks. Uh, to a soft, the software that uh, allows to compare the pixel in the ultrasound to the uh, voxel of the MRI. When brain shift uh, occurs because of the presence of the tumor or because of CSF leak, we can uh, also correct uh, the navigation, performing a fine tuning. This is an example of an in-plane correction in which the tumor bulges out, so we brought back the uh, MRI and also an out-of-plane correction when there is a, uh, a distortion due to, to uh, movement uh, of, the, of the organ. The ultrasound, uh, the fusion imaging ultrasound can be performed several times uh, during surgery. Uh, it's not at all time consuming. This is a, a temporal glioblastoma in which we can see a residual and we can also compare uh, superimposing the two images, uh, we can compare the two modalities, and this is a, a scan of the, the, the resection in which we can you can appreciate the that the, with the, not only we have the problem with brain shift, but also we have the problem with brain deformation. That of course, of course, after uh, resection of the tumor, uh, we published our results uh, two years ago of this. Um, regarding this procedure and also we tested the um, the accuracy of this system on a series of 79 patients in which re the registration error was less than two millimeter in uh, all cases and the car uh, craniotomy was placed correctly in all uh, cases also and uh, fine tuning was performed throughout the procedure in all cases obtaining uh, a good uh, in order to fix brain shift and brain distortion Fusion imaging can also be performed with uh, advanced applications as, such as fusion imaging with uh, uh, fMRI and DTI, which is uh, and DTI, which is very important, uh, specific, uh, particularly for tumor located uh, in eloquent areas. And uh, it's important at the end of the resection to uh, locate the structures in case of uh, brain distortion. And uh, the fusion imaging can be performed also uh, using other uh, ultrasound modalities such as Doppler and also contrast enhanced ultrasound, which is, uh, in our opinion, uh, uh, very useful to highlight uh, highly vascularized tumor uh, and also to uh, locate uh, the vessels, the feeding of vessels through, throughout the surgical field, uh, facilitating the surgical strategy. 
and uh, another ultrasound modality which is uh, very interesting and useful which I, we are exploring is elastosonography elastosonography which in a series of uh, um, roughly 80 patients seems to um, highlight uh, f further highlight uh, the lesion uh, confirming the information provided by the standard B mode fusion imaging allowed us also to perform a uh, comparison between uh, uh, the pattern of enhancement uh, with contrast agents, uh, ultrasound contrast agents, and uh, gadolinium, which in global stomach surgery is the uh, gold standard for uh, for tumor resection. And in fact, uh, comparing the two modalities, uh, we found that the pattern of enhancement of the glioblastoma superimposing the two modalities. Uh, is superimposable between uh, co ultrasound contrast agents and gadolinium. Also, uh, navigation, fusion imaging is very useful to uh, detect uh, glioblastoma remnants during the resection and also providing uh, the orientation for uh, bioptic sampling. This is an exemplificative case of a uh, parietal glioblastoma. This is the, are the images uh, on uh, B mode, in which we the, pa the, the lesion had a large necrotic center. So as soon as we we made a small cortisectomy, and as soon as we opened the necrotic center, the lesion collapsed. This is the uh, fusion with the uh, MRI to assess the orientation. Then we vi visualize the lesion to confirm the impression on uh, B-mode and to localize the feeding uh, vessel of the tumor. And also we performed elastography, which as you can see, confirmed the uh, shape uh, of the lesion. Here we are halfway through the resection in which we can see hyperechoic uh, tissue and you can see that the cavity completely collapsed. This uh, is another scan in which uh, uh, some artifacts appears, but we scanned the cavity and we found some residual tumor. We usually perform a scan through the parenchyma, not within the cavity, especially when we perform a small cortisectomy. Uh, we perform cells to confirm that the hyperechoic area was, uh, an, uh, was tumor remnant, and this is the um, resection control with ultrasound and with the MRI. So in conclusion, uh, we found that fusion imaging, ultrasound fusion imaging offers a continuous and dynamic imaging and it's reliable, reliable and uh, offers a real-time uh, feedback. Uh, it facilitates the understanding of uh, the ultrasound semiotics and uh, provides orientation and permits to fix the brain shift and uh, the, brain the brain distortion. Uh, summing the positive aspect of the two imaging modalities. Uh, as I said, this is a part of a larger project aimed at the developing development of a multimodal contrast agent. And uh, <coughs> this uh, technique should be further enhanced. I think we should uh, stick to uh, develop guidelines for the usage of ultrasound in uh, neurosurgery and which is an evolving technique which uh, offers uh, uh, more and more um, modality to uh, guide uh, our practice. And um, training is fundamental <coughs> and uh, we are also working on a, a simulation uh, system for uh, ultrasound in neurosurgery which is a topic of other talks uh, uh, in the next sessions. Uh, I want uh, to particularly thank uh, Dr. Dimeco, who continually pushes forward this, uh, the, the use of ultrasound in neurosurgery, and uh, all, uh, of course, all uh, the team of our, uh, of our unit and our colleagues, uh, radiologists, who supported us uh, throughout uh, seven years now. Thank you for your attention.